I'll, oh, that, that that just happened. Okay. Um, I'll um I'll let you know with um, I'll go like that when there's ten seconds left or something. Okay. For sixty seconds. Okay. Okay, but but your but yours doesn't start until till I ask the question. Yeah. No, that's fine. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thanks, Emma, the hydro vet nurse, for um, logging in here. And um, so I've got a few questions here. Um, I mean, a, a lot of dogs have arthritis, like, um, you know, of the knees and the hips and the elbows. And we always talk about things like weight loss and dietary supplements and maybe pain relief. But there's another tool in the shed, isn't there? Um, can you tell us a little bit about hydrotherapy with arthritis and dogs? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, with osteoarthritis, putting them in the warm water to do um, swimming in the hydrotherapy pool will take a lot of pressure off the joints. Um, the hydrostatic pressure of the water actually encourages blood flow through the joints. So it will relieve any inflammation, any pain and really help um, more fluid motion. It'll allow them to build up muscle without putting strain on the joints due to the buoyancy of the water. Um, so it can be really soothing for them, really beneficial, um, and just help strengthen the joints um, and soothe the pain at the same time. So kind of like the, the the water like even compresses the blood vessels. Is that what you mean by the hydrostatic pressure? Yes. Yeah. So the hydrostatic pressure basically uh, means that like so if you get into the water, person or dog, um, you'll feel uh, the water kind of like flow around you, um, and that feeling is called hydrostatic pressure. And that hydrostatic pressure in the joints um, encourages the blood to flow through the joints as the animal moves. Mm. So um, it basically creates a really nice fluid, weightless motion. Um, that allows those dogs to exercise freely um, and the warm water increases blood flow to um, relieve pain in the joints and also promote healing as well. Cool. Um, I'm going to have to learn how to like refer more often than that because I always talk about the other things, but no one ever takes takes up the uh, physio and hydrotherapy options and, and maybe it's something that we really should look at a lot more. Um, so like, have you found any particular condition that's common that it really works with? Um, yes. So there's different types of, obviously, when you talk about hydrotherapy, you can talk, be talking about pool swimming as well as underwater treadmill. So um, the dogs we will often see in the underwater treadmill are your uh, miniature dash hounds and French bulldogs because they can be quite prone to a disease called um, intervertebral disc disease so or IVDD. Um, so putting them in the treadmill is really beneficial, obviously, at the direction of the vet, a suitable time post-op. Um, putting them in the treadmill uh, gives proprioceptive stimulation from the treadmill belt. So we can control the level of the water. We can control the speed of the treadmill. It's a really controlled environment. And when they're walking on the belt, that um, proprioceptive stim from the rubber matting on the belt mm. will encourage uh, the proprioception in the feet. And, so it helps uh, them to find the feet more, a bit more quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, stimulate the nerves as well. So it will help encourage um, nerve regrowth. Oh, wow. Uh, and also build muscle, core muscle. And all of the core muscles will link back to them then building strength in their hind limbs. Have you, are there studies showing that like it speeds up um, them getting back their life, walking again? Um, I don't know if there's any specific studies, I'll be honest, but I personally have seen a few cases where we've had dogs that have been um, paraplegic or quadriplegic even, and we've had them in the underwater treadmill having therapy. Obviously, it's been combined with physio. It's been combined with, you know, a combination of therapies. We'll also incorporate laser therapy as well. Um, and we're talking kind of six weeks of therapy, um, at least once or twice a week. And we're already starting to see improvement. It's a long road, so mm. it's never going to kind of magically fix itself. Every dog is different, basically. Um, but after that kind of six-week period, we're already seeing improvements in those dogs with that condition um, from using the underwater treadmill therapy. It's it's really quite amazing. That's awesome. Thanks. Uh, that's a nice one to capture there. Um, let's see. I'm going to reset that. So with hydrotherapy, how long are sessions? How long do you do them for? Like, is it weekly, monthly, forever? 
Um, again, so it can really vary according to the dog um, and the condition. Um, whenever I was doing hydro, the sessions would usually be about 30 minutes. So you'd have like 10 minute uh, sort of period of time, five minutes, five minutes each side to um, talk to the owner, get the dog ready, um, discuss any issues, find out how they'd been the during the previous week. Um, it's always good to find out how they got on after their previous session as well because you want to incorporate that into your next session mm. um, depending on they responded to what you did in the previous one um so you have that bit of time either side but usually it's about 20 minutes total in the pool um doing swimming um and we'll do some massage in there we'll do some proprioceptive stim we'll do some range of motion all those different things are incorporated while they're swimming um and then treadmill sessions again about half an hour usually um so as a rule with hydro it is about 30 minute session in terms of how long you're doing the treatment for we always recommend ideally once a week minimum to get the full benefit but in terms of how long that you're going to be coming once a week for it really depends on the dog and the condition and some dogs would need it weekly some would need it every other week um some are going to need lifelong hydrotherapy there's not necessarily going to be an end date to their condition improving um it can be kind of a management um sort of phase kind of like with people uh, yes yeah exactly um but then some dogs we will set like a goal so that's also really beneficial as we'll do like a in one month we want to be at this stage mm -hmm. in the next month we want to be at this stage and i find that really useful for clients as well because it just helps them have kind of targets in their mind for for where we're going to be and, and what progress we're going to be making yeah, to have like measurable targets within timelines makes you feel like it's worth it and you'll continue to go. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Awesome. Um, and a quick silly question. Um, do all dogs know how to swim, like naturally? So that's actually a really good question. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> so like what dogs can swim and what dogs are you like, oh man, this is going to need a life jacket? Yeah, for sure. So um, some dogs like your Labradors, they're going to swim. Yeah. Your Labradors Why love not? to swim. So you're not, as a rule, going to have any issues with them. Um, I remember I had, I think it was actually a Border Collie um, who, again, they do like water, but sometimes they're not always so keen. And she really was very unsure. So I had to like essentially give her swimming lessons for like the first couple of sessions and be like, no, you can swim. It's fine. You can do it. And then once she'd done it a couple of times, she was feeling a lot more confident. And then after that, she absolutely loved it. So again, it really depends on the dog and kind of their confidence levels and how they feel about it. Um, a, a side note is that when I was working at the hydrotherapy center, as a rule, we wouldn't generally put the brachycephalic breeds in the pool mm -hmm. just because, how they're built um kind of physically uh with their obviously the facial features and the kind of rounded chest mm -hmm. um it can be really difficult for them to find balance and buoyancy in the pool so do they um, like do they go forward or back or how does that like race yeah. so you mean that like the short face breeds like bulldogs pugs um hmm. boxers you mean yeah, yeah, things like that. So um, we had a couple that would go in the pool, but they would have kind of additional um, buoyancy aids just to help them. Um, and it again, they were kind of arthritis management, so it wasn't quite so intense. Um, but usually we would put those dogs in the treadmill just because mm -hmm. it's a bit more controlled. You've got the capacity to kind of support them and they still get, you know, just as much benefit from it. Um, but it's just that little bit safer for them. Interesting. Interesting. Cool. Um uh, um, do s small dogs and large dogs swim just as good or bad equally, or do large large dogs are are they more have a, do they more have a knack for it? Uh, no. Because so I think I'm I think smart. I think mine would like go underwater. I just I think she would just <laughs> sink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's small. Oh no. <laughs> um. So your smaller breeds, again, it really depends. I know I've known an Irish wolfhound that goes in the in the hydrotherapy pool and loves it and swims. Um, and I've also swum um, little chihuahuas. So mm. basically any dog can in theory swim um, and do it. 
some of them just find it a bit more challenging than others um and according to their condition and just them needing that bit of extra support um that it might just be that they need a bit of extra help when when doing that Mm -hmm. Um, and it's also really important to uh, get kind of health consent from your vet as well, I will say, before bringing any dog along to hydrotherapy, um, just because we are, uh, as, a, as a hydrotherapist, you're in addition to veterinary treatment. So you're complementing that veterinary care. Yeah. So uh, vet is going to need to examine the dog, examine, um, you know, the, the condition and decide whether or not hydrotherapy is appropriate. Um, and then they offer that guidance and, and consent for you before you take your pet to, to a hydrotherapy center as well. Awesome. I mean, I must say as a vet, I don't know what they, what, I don't know. I'm not sure like why the reasons, like I wouldn't, I don't know the contraindications I, to be honest. And I think most vets wouldn't know why not. Um, mm -hmm. so perhaps we should like educate ourselves a bit more about that. Um, you know what I mean? I yeah, no, um, 100%. Um, I definitely think knowledge surrounding hydrotherapy is growing. Mm. Um, I really coming like it's quite a forward um, form of therapy, I feel, um, in the veterinary world at the moment. Um, unfortunately, myself, I'm not currently um, practicing as a hydrotherapist. Um, I'm hoping to get back into it at some point. Um, but I I'm very, very passionate about the dogs um, being rehabilitated through hydro hydrotherapy and physiotherapy. Um, some of the main contraindications would be kind of heart disease, for example. Yeah. yeah. Any any kind of strenuous exercise like that, um, especially when water's involved, mm -hmm. we don't normally recommend it. Um, mm -hmm. that would be a contraindication, um, especially if it's severe heart disease, because obviously there's that increased risk to the patient. So those are the sorts of ones we would then be like, okay, you're gonna go and do some land based physio instead. Yeah. It's so like a stress test, really. Yeah, it could yeah, be, yeah. Um, yeah. So just having those different options for the for the patients, but there is a form of physical therapy that, in theory, can suit any breed, any dog, um, any condition. Right. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emma, for your time today. No problem at all. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Stick around, though. Stick around. <laughs> so um, you also, you also. So let me just press stop recording you also are into wildlife yeah yeah um stop recording